Hey, 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 superstars. It is time for our February recap. Today, I've got a video response for Swing Away Sports Cards, a little bit of mail and some pickups, and I'd like your thoughts on some stuff. But first, I kind of want to apologize. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, acknowledge maybe that I've only been doing the Grail Quest videos lately, and I know a lot of you really like those, but I'm still trying to move that along and find the time to do some other videos too. But those take priority because they involve other people who've waited a very long time and they've paid me real money. But uh, anyway, I haven't forgotten how to make other videos. I've got plenty of TTM videos to do. Yes, I still do those. And I've got other projects that I really want to get into, but I'm not going anywhere. So I will figure all of this out eventually. Now onto the show. Clint over at Swing Away Sports Cards wants to see our ideal fantasy lineup. And truth be told, I wouldn't be very good at playing fantasy sports because I'm just too much of a homer, but I'm game for a little VR fun. He also wants to see some shout outs for channels with under 200 subs. So cue the fantasy music. I have my third edition handbook, my lucky dice and some delicious little debbies. I've invited some great YouTubers to play a little D&D &D with me. AL's RPOs is getting jiggy with his half orc Vil Smith. Mick from Dead Centered has decided to play a centaur from the island of First Basington by the name of Guaro II. Alan Twitchell is joining the party with his halfling Twitwit. Grimy Mitt Sports Cards is playing a gnome by the name of Hosiram, who will serve as the leader of this party. Uh, Disguise Sports Cards is playing a half-elf named Lindor the Smiley. Card Wolf is joining the party with his dwarf Cedric of Mullins. I Love Sports Cards, formerly known as Wildcat72, is playing a Minotaur called B. Rice the Harper, and Psyguy29 has his goblin, the sneaky Byro Buxton. My man Goody G brought along his sort of dual character, human Crispy Bryant, and to round it out, the card doctor is playing the elf Bebor. Now, roll for initiative. I, th I think I did that right. All the way from Canada, da, 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 we've got a nice care package from Mr. Sticks G. It says, Scott, keep making YouTube great. You know I'm a huge fan of what you do, Stixy. Aw, oh, shucks. Thanks, Stixy. You're not so bad yourself, buddy. Let's see. He uses proper green tape. We got uh, Diamond Refractor Jose and a Clue Bot and 86 Jimenez Rookie. I like that one. Uh, Shane Bieber and another Jimenez Rookie. You know what I like, man. Thank you so much. I think this is the third month in a row that Tony Black has sent me something. He must really like my care package segments. Wait a minute. This is for Mrs. Reindeer. Gimme. Tony sent me something? Thank you, Tony. You shouldn't have. Christy Brinkley's biggest fan. You're an uptown girl living in an uptown world. Here's your awesome Albert Joey Bell card. Aw, pretty purple tape. Look at that cutie. Adorbs. Babies make everybody happy, even Albert Bell. Beautiful. And a 1971 Leroy Kelly. From Morgan State. That's tight. Thanks, Tony. I love these. Here's where I'd like your input. I'm gonna send in a little SGC order. I did one last year and it's that time again, but I don't wanna grade everything, just stuff that is super cool to me. So I think I have my mind made up, but I wanna see what you all think. Some of you will tell me to grade everything, and some of you will cringe at the thought of me dooming these cards to an existence in a cold plastic coffin. I look at it as a way to further showcase some of my favorite cards, but the card's value has to warrant it too. So here's what we got. My 48 Leaf Lou Boudreaux. Corners are super sharp, surface is clean, but this was a scrapbook card. I love this card, but I think an authentic or a one grade would sort of demean it because it's so beautiful otherwise. Uh, 52 Al Rosen, good centering, no creases, corners are okay, not great, but a really nice card, and I think I am going to send this one in, hoping for four at least on that. 1921 American Caramel Bill Wamsgans, I love this one too because it was a gift from Don's Field of Dreams cards. We were hanging out at a show and he saw me like oogling over this one, but it has its issues, and again, I don't want a low grade detracting from how special this card is to me. 1920 Trist Speaker. This was a national goal from last year, and it's only going to get authentic because it's a hand cut strip card, but Trist definitely needs a tux. Uh, 49 MP and Company Lou Boudreaux. I always thought that these cards were really neat looking, but now that I have one, I don't really love it. It was really lazy design, and I think I'm going to pass on this one. 
1967 Venezuelan Bob Feller. It's only going to get an authentic, or if I'm really lucky, a one. But I really dig this one, and it's pretty unique, so I think Bob's going to get a tux. I've got a couple of T205 commons, George Stovall and Joe Birmingham. They're gorgeous cards, but maybe I'd get a one or a two. I could almost buy graded copies for what it would cost me to slab them. And lastly, 1947 Bonbread, Boudreau, and Feller. Both of these seem to be in really nice shape. The value might be there, but I just don't know if I really like them enough. Maybe I'm not a huge fan of black and white cards. I don't know. I also worry about size requirements. They're both a little bit different. Bob is a tiny bit taller, but they both seem to meet the minimum size requirements for these. I have nothing to compare them to though. So I'm sure all of these would look great slab, but I want to hear what you guys think. I'll get these out of the way first because I'm sure a lot of you have never heard of these guys, but they're part of my Indians World Series rosters autograph project. From the 1948 World Series, here's Ray Boone, father of Bob Boone and grandfather to Brett and Aaron Boone. And here's Ken Keltner, seven-time All-Star and really good third baseman. And Thurman Tucker, I just love the care that went into this postcard. Somebody carefully cut out a photo of his head and wrote down career stats on the back. Uh, from the 1954 World Series, I picked up Bill Glenn, Ray Narleski, Sam Dente, Rudy Regalado, and George Strickland. Those picture postcards are pretty neat. Here is Mel Harder, who was a Cleveland lifer, never played in a World Series, but he was a really, really good pitcher and coach. And now some guys you have heard of. I bought a small lot of baseballs on Facebook. Here's Kerry Wood to make Tony jealous. Uh, Phil Negro, I have a couple of his autographs, but I did not have a single sign ball. And I did not have a Dennis Eckersley autograph, so I was happy to add this one too. And my two favorite pickups this month, I actually found an Alvaro card I didn't have, signed no less, a uh, 92 Pro card Sky Sox minor league card, and prepare yourselves because you're all going to be very jealous. Check out this signed press photo with Don Mossy, Ray Narleski, and Coach Bill Loeb. Look at Don, he is so ready to put out some serious fires. Normally, I put these kinds of uh, 8x10s and press photos in a binder, but this one might be getting a frame. It really makes me happy. All right, that's it for now. I want to thank Clint at Swing Away Sports Cards for the fun contest. I need to thank Styx G and the Honorable Tony Black. And of course, thank you all for watching my nonsense. Now I got to put all this stuff away. And I'm pretty sure I have some more Grail Quest drawings to get done. So I'll see you all next week.